A lovely good morning. It is five o'clock in the morning in Germany and I am currently flying to Canada. I am going up to the Yukon, which is a highly renowned gold and resource district located in the northern part of Canada, where the temperature is already becoming extremely cold during this time of year. I'm visiting a really interesting, in my opinion, super interesting raw materials industry there. The company believes that I will gain a very good impression of the company on site and maybe even learn some very exciting details about the company firsthand. I want to let you in on this. I hope it will bring you some value and that you can get to know the company, the stock a little better and get a better picture, a better impression of it. When I'm here in Vancouver or when I'm on a side visit in Canada or North America, I usually have someone by my side. This is Andre Dirk by occupation. He works as the publisher and editor-in-chief of Gold Hertz Plus, a renowned publishing company. We're flying from Vancouver to Whitehorse. Whitehorse won't mean anything to any of you. This town has like around 45,000 residents, if that. It is situated way up north in Canada in the renowned Yukon district, known for its picturesque landscapes and rich history. We are going to visit Gladiator Metals, you betcha. It's a company that explores for copper. Individuals who possess a relatively substantial copper project in that particular area near Whitehorse. And the interesting thing about this copper project is that there has actually never been any real commercial exploration done there. It was always a training ground for the local drilling companies who would then spread out and do the exploration drilling for all the other companies. And in the process, they stumbled upon the fact that it's not just a place for training, but also that the ground there is quite rich in natural resources. Due to this reason, the project has now been listed on the stock exchange as Gladiator Metals, in addition to its previous status. And indeed, we will investigate that tomorrow once we have arrived at our destination. Upon arrival, yes. Exactly. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. That is the river commonly referred to as the Yukon River, which is located in the Yukon Territory of Canada. That is where the name of the entire state originates from. And here you can observe it quite beautifully over there at this totem pole that is standing there. That here is fundamentally the land of the First Nations. And by the way, they're also incredibly significant for mining and the entire mining industry as a whole. Nothing really functions here without them. Just here in the Yukon, I believe there are 14 distinct tribes. And in the event that you possess like a project, even if it is merely an exploratory project, you always need to involve them in the process without exception. I mean, that's obviously a give and take because if a mine is created there, it naturally also secures jobs. And with Gladiator Metals, it's really great that even the former owners who are now shareholders of the White Horse project that we're going to see tomorrow also come from the First Nations. So you basically have them already integrated into the company. And that obviously makes this complete relationship building thing a lot easier and more manageable. That is definitely a tremendous advantage. It cannot be underestimated. I've seen a lot of projects that didn't make any progress for a long time because they just couldn't agree on anything. If they're in the company, they want it to thrive as it benefits both the companies and the First Nations naturally. And that is definitely an advantage you possess on your side when, like, the interests might potentially be saved or safeguarded. Currently, we have set off on our journey. Unfortunately, it is raining a bit. Let us now proceed to explore the first stop of our visit here. That's where the drill cores from the project are also located. Every exploration company has what's called a core check. I don't even know the German translation for that. But if you want to figure out in football, there's this saying, the truth lies on the field with the explorers. The truth lies in the ground. You got to drill for that. This is what drill cores look like. That's just a little snippet for now particularly when the rock up there is merely sediment, it appears similar to this back here. 
That is a type of rock that is more resistant in nature, and it is likely to have originated from a greater depth within the Earth's crust. And of course, you always see it like this. You can determine the depth by observing it. 133M, 132, 131, so that later, when it is analyzed, you can see where the mineralization was found. And naturally, you don't see everything. But for instance, if you observe here in certain locations where the mineralization is more intense, if you take a glance here, for example, these green particles, you can already perceive with the naked eye, all right, there is something. Indeed, and now let's enter. And Marco, are you prepared? Well, let's take a look at what is waiting for us inside in terms of new results and get ourselves up to date with the latest information and findings. The White House Copper Project by Gladiator Metals is located near the town of Whitehorse in Yukon. And it's not just an exploration project, because there was already an active mine here in the 70s. That was operated by Hud Bay Minerals, a big Canadian mining company, from 1976 to 82. The price of copper dropped sharply. The business was no longer profitable, and you can see it in the town too, that with the decline of the copper mine, time has stood still in the town. And this project is currently intended to be revived. They have commenced drilling in that location once more actively since the previous year, thereby recommencing exploration activities. The advantage is you don't have to start from zero because there was already a historical mine. From then on, you still have the outcomes. And the previous owner of the mine, the Coin family, is a well-established drilling service provider. So essentially a company that performs drilling in the ground for exploration companies in the vicinity. They also belong to the First Nations here, so they are well connected with the locals. And over the years since the mine was shut down, they have also used the area to drill once in order to keep the concession alive at a minimal level but also to train their crews there. And of course, during that time, a ton of data and a ton of drill cores have accumulated, which haven't been analyzed yet, but you can already see on the surface that they are heavily mineralized. The objective is then to combine all of these historical data with the new exploration data into one consolidated resource. We will ask again later when that is realistically expected. Currently, they are still drilling. It is of utmost importance to currently try to explore and understand additional high-grade, highly concentrated zones, in addition to the historical data that we already know, in order to build a model. This model would allow us to start mining operations both in open pit mines and, if the conditions allow it, underground as well, thereby maximizing our potential for extracting valuable resources. Way back there, you can see those bright wooden crates. These are the core samples from the current drilling. When you make a right turn at this point, you will see a whole bunch of, yeah, kind of outdated boxes that are quite noticeable. Those are the historical drill cores that nobody has analyzed yet and that can now be analyzed. There's much work left to be done. I think the company has a lot on its plate. Exactly. But you also have to say, normally, in order to drill what is here, companies may have to invest millions at today's prices and also use years of drilling seasons, so to speak, exploration seasons, just to get there. Yes, they possess it on the farm. It is present here. The input text is insufficient. Please provide more information. Music is an art that uses sound and rhythm to express emotions conveying messages and creating powerful experiences for the audience, making it a meaningful form of artistic expression. So safety is everything, right? Yeah, definitely. Let's go. Let's see. The weather is cooperating again. It is dry, ladies and gentlemen. Dry as a bone. Dry, yeah, not on the feet. No, sadly not. Now it's getting tough, but we're not exactly on a pony farm here either. We are currently present at the drill rig. This is essentially the drilling rig where all of these incredible cores that we observed in the laboratory are produced and manufactured. Yeah, so here's the deal. It goes into the ground and then it's pulled out bit by bit. We can take another look to see if you can spot it here. So basically that's the fresh rock that comes out of the drilling rig back there. And then we hope that there's something good in it. All of the green oxidations that you see on the rocks in this particular area 
Those are clear signs indicating the presence of copper mineralization, which is an important geological phenomenon. And this is essentially an opening where Hakbe Minerals conducted some work in the early 1980s, during which time they carried out exploration activities in the area. So they had plans to dismantle here before they ultimately decided to shut down the mine completely. And yes, however, it is quite evident that the oxide is running and spreading extensively in all directions in this particular area. And that, of course, provides a solid and promising starting point to build upon and further develop. And that is the reason why the extra drilling is happening at this very location in the nearby area in the southern portion of the Whitehorse Copper Project. We're here in this area, Cowley Park, and the goal is to connect the various high-grade zones that were already discovered back then and essentially define a larger ore body from it and then establish a resource that could be economically mined as a single mine. That's the plan. There exists a substantial quantity of water in this particular area, Marco. I am curious about the extent of its depth. Could you please provide me with information regarding the measurement of the water's depth at this location? Yeah, there's a whole lot of water in there and it goes about 350 meters deep down here until you reach the bottom of the mining that took place here. And the magnitude, that's obviously a shining sign for gladiator metals. You see, the infrastructure around it is already in place and doesn't need to be painstakingly rebuilt. Yeah, we simply drove into a fairly wide street. That was not a hiking trail. They constructed it using materials from Hard Bay Minerals. Yeah, exactly. Until 1982, this was the historic operation. And you can see somehow the cars are also coming close. Here, the scrap disposal is then done illegally, rolled down the mountain. Yeah, sadly. Unrelated to the mine, of course. We've seen it with the Yukon elsewhere before. You betcha. The recycling center is too far away. People are lazy. That's more of a problem in remote areas, you know. Then you place them where they don't stand out. Exactly. But you see, you can get up there with a regular car. That just shows in the infrastructure that you can actually get here with simple cars. At this moment, I find myself completely breathless, exhausted, and unable to continue any further on this final stretch of my journey. That's pretty interesting, but it's amazing how well developed the area still is from those times. That is because the government in the Yukon desires to maintain the infrastructure as they naturally anticipate that there will be an increase in mining activities in this area in the future. Because many of the roads around here are still in really good condition. That's a small mining area, also from Hard Bay back then. So when you enter here at this moment, you might think, OK, perhaps it goes underground, but it actually stops right here. As always, there are, of course, a few junk vehicles that have been dumped and left abandoned here in this particular location. However, no, so in this location, they solely extracted minerals from the surface and then proceeded at a relatively steep incline. But subsequently, yes, that was more or less towards the conclusion of the previous period of production and they promptly ceased operations in this area as well. The fascinating aspect is, as per Marcus, who is graciously giving us a tour here, there appears to be visible gold in the rock, in contrast to the other places we've seen so far. This discovery is truly remarkable and adds to the allure of this location. Moreover, the samples that were obtained also showed an above average gold content compared to similar samples in the area. That is the reason why, if you are currently at Crowley Park, where we were just earlier, you will be able to observe the drilling activities being shifted to this location next, because I do not think Gladiator Metals has even started drilling at this particular site yet. And yeah, you definitely want to check out if maybe, if you dig a little deeper here, you can see that not much has really happened here. Whether one will also find high quality copper veins in this location, as I mentioned earlier, perhaps there is also the possibility of discovering traces of gold. And indeed, we possess the capacity to be curious. I'm really impressed. I have to say, when I see this, you can really see the mineralization. That truly captures your attention. Incredibly fascinating and truly captivating. Everywhere you see the green spots, that's all oxidation. And up there, 
Greetings there, greetings there. Please be cautious and avoid stumbling or falling. Tell me, how does it work with insurance here if we break our legs at this moment? Cut! Yeah, presently we are back at the starting point of our journey. We are back here in Vancouver at the harbor, and unlike the commencement of our journey, the weather here is entirely different. Now it's rainy, cloudy. When we started, it was sunny. Unfortunately, sunshine isn't so common around here. Not that, but the weather did have a certain influence on what we saw during our site visit in the Yukon district, Andre. So what is your overall impression of this site visit that we have just completed? Yeah, Marco, we definitely lucked out with the weather in that it rained a little bit. You're right. By doing so, you could witness the mineralization more clearly in the rock at the site due to the rock being damp. It was a really interesting trip, and if I may summarize what were the positive aspects, what was negative or maybe not so great. First of all, for sure, it's an old mine. That means it's not a virgin exploration project. You know, there are ore deposits of high grade with high concentrations of copper, and by the way, gold and molybdenum which is difficult to pronounce molybdenum, that can, of course, be extremely helpful later in production as byproducts, thereby boosting profitability. Secondly, you have the previous owner as a co-shareholder in the company. The previous co-owner is, as I mentioned earlier, a drilling company that has its headquarters and main office located right here in Whitehorse, which is the capital of Yukon, a territory in Canada. That means the company utilized the Whitehorse Copper Project as a form of training ground subsequent to its closure, where the newly hired drilling crews underwent training. They stated that they possessed more than a decade's worth of drill cores, indicating that it would require a company a span of 10 years to generate an equivalent quantity of drill cores and ensure their proper organization and storage at that location. You can analyze all of that and include it in a resource. That certainly saves a large amount of time. However, it also aids to already be aware of where the high-grade zones truly are, you know? Where can we find the greatest concentration of copper in the ground? Thirdly, because the co-owner is right there and possesses a drilling company, you naturally have a significant cost advantage. Typically, you have to fly in the crews to the region where they want to do some exploring. You require cooks, you require doctors, and they need to be accommodated during their stay. That costs extra money, of course, and that's why it's a big advantage here that you don't have to do all of that. It's a no-go. Marcus, the chief geologist and president, told me, for example, that drilling costs are about 160 Canadian dollars per meter here. Normal costs in the Yukon are more around $250. That's definitely a huge advantage. That means ultimately you get the same for a 1. 6M budget that you would typically get for 2. 5M. That is obviously a substantial difference. In the fourth place, the coin family of co-owners can be said to trace its roots back to the First Nations. That means she's very well connected with all the tribes in and around Whitehorse. That makes a lot of things easier, which of course also applies to the approval for exploration, but also for a potential production later on. And there is in fact a significant gravel pit located nearby that is currently in production and actively extracting gravel. That means there won't be such big problems starting production there because noise pollution and the like, that's all already been checked and approved. And the mine of gladiator metals, that would be a bit further out. That means it's also a huge advantage. Fifth, and we witnessed this firsthand yesterday, there is still a great deal of potential for exploration. There are also many of the cores born this year that have not yet been in the lab. But where you can already see on the surface that there is an extreme mineralization, a significant mineralization, and that's why I believe, or I am confident, that we will witness a truly excellent flow of news in the upcoming weeks and months when it pertains to the outcomes. On the downside, what I don't like is mainly the market, because currently investors don't seem to care about copper, although it's a significant metal in the energy transition that is currently taking place. However, it can also be an opportunity and advantage, because if we look at Gladiator Metals as an example, the company is currently valued at around 16 million. There are $8 million in the bank. So basically that means the company and its projects are valued at 8 million, but it has tremendous potential spanning over 35 kilometers in length 
and five kilometers in width. And ultimately, for those investors who say, I have a long-term perspective, I don't need to make quick profits in two or three months, this is obviously an extremely interesting entry point. So, to sum up all the details regarding the project, the company is primarily involved in drilling operations in the southern area, which is commonly known as the Cowley Park region. And there, as I said, very high grades have already been found. But there's also, we visited it yesterday, Marco, you remember the Arctic Chief project, sort of a sub-project where there were these magnificent white stones and this beautiful view. From there, there are more outcrops, that's what they call it. That's what you might call concentrations of rocks that come out of the ground, where you can basically see mineralization on the surface, which are lined up like beads on a string. One would be interested in trying to take a look at Crawley Park with the current drilling program in place. Is it possible for these mineralizations to be connected? If so, it would result in the formation of a larger ore body, which would have dimensions that are even bigger than those of Cowley Park. And then you would actually have a luxury problem saying, yeah, where do we actually want to focus our attention now? But that's obviously a first world problem that we would all love to have. When you consider all these factors together, I have to say, we definitely have a very interesting risk reward ratio here. Like I said, in the short term, it could be that the market still doesn't care and that as an investor, you need patience here. I'm still a shareholder of the company and I do receive quite a lot out of it. As mentioned, we anticipate drill results from the ongoing program at Collie Park later this year. Then potentially there may also be the additional results of Arctic Chief a little further to the north on the project. I believe that definitely brings more interesting news flow. And when the market finally starts playing along again, the stock was already significantly higher, even though less was known previously. Then I believe that we possess a highly fascinating copper project in this location, as I previously mentioned, not merely a project in its early stages, but genuinely an advanced exploration project, where our main focus is to determine whether certain zones can potentially be linked to a larger project. And in terms of the risk-reward ratio, there are always risks in the exploration world, but I don't think I need to tell you that. However, in terms of the risk-reward ratio, we have a very interesting project or a very interesting company here in terms of the current valuation. In fact, it has the potential to impress and excite investors with significant value growth in the stock market in the coming years if the market cooperates and investors start paying more attention to copper again. Yeah, thanks, Andre. And as you saw in your conclusion just now, the sun came out. Well, a ray of sunshine in the sky. Unfortunately, I have to head home now. But I would be happy if we could do such a tour together at a company again in the near future. Because I really liked it a lot. I got a whole bunch of impressions from the company right on site that I wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. And I believe that a video accompaniment of a visit to a company could truly be appealing and of interest to our audience.